This is Current Thought, Con Edison's podcast providing a first look at the cutting edge ideas, innovations, and technology that is capturing the attention of the energy industry. Today's guest will have you thinking about energy in a whole new way. It might just change your life. Welcome to Current Thought. I'm your host, Anne Marie Corbelis. Our topic today is waste heat management, and our guest is Sylvia Curram, an engineer, marathon runner, Tesla owner, and a mom. She's always on the lookout for things that will do things better, faster, and more efficiently. Thanks for joining us today, Sylvia. Hi, Anne Marie. What is waste heat recovery and how does it work? So, Waste heat is one of the largest sources of clean and inexpensive energy that is available for all of us, but yet it is currently really untapped. And I think the heart of the problem is the inefficiency of the entire energy life cycle. Look, you know, I'm an engineer, and for me, the science has been always a very fascinating subject. And one of the most fundamental laws of nature is a conservation of energy principle, which means energy cannot be created or destroyed, right? It can be only changed from one form to another. That is the first law of thermodynamic. And then the second law says the process happen in certain directions, only from hot to cold. For example, if you have a cup of coffee sitting on the table, eventually the coffee will cool down but it will never really get hot by itself, right? So we have to abide by these principles when we talk about waste heat recovery. And when we convert energy every day, which we do every day in buildings, industrial facilities, we rely on on these type of concepts. And really the issue is that nationally, about 70% of energy we produce, we really lose in the form of heat somewhere in the middle between production and consumption, and that heat evaporates into the atmosphere. So waste heat recovery are any system, technology, or process changes that can capture the heat that evaporates otherwise and turn it into a process, usable form. Either you convert it from thermal to electric, or you recycle it and reuse it in a building for water or space heating. Regardless, you you, you do that to save energy that you would have spent otherwise. So basically you're recycling energy that you wasted. So it would seem that there's a lot of opportunities to capture heat that's being wasted and and use it other places if we just have the right technology. So what is the technology these days? Where, Where are we at with technology? Right, so recycling heat is really not that straightforward as other energy efficiency measures, such as light bulb replacement or even replacement inefficient old oil boiler with highly efficient electric alternative like a heat pump. It is more of a a strategy to understand where is your waste heat, how to capture it, and then how to integrate it and reuse it in your building. So buildings are really the main source of greenhouse gas emissions in New York City. So capturing the heat really not only avoid greenhouse gas emissions, but it also help you to recycle and recapture. So basically you're avoiding energy and greenhouse gas and you're saving customer money, which is the point. <clears throat> what type of technologies are, are there? So anything and everything that can provide the thermal heat transfer. If you put a heat exchanger in inside waste stream, right? And what is the waste stream? Like picture a big power plant and the big stacks that going outside um, and and blowing relatively hot air into the atmosphere. Now that air has maybe 60, 70, 80 degrees. It's still enough energy to use and transfer with something that is cooler. Remember, we're going from hot to cold. So if you take that air and transfer it with the air that is 50 degrees, you have 30 degrees difference. Now you can use that BTU, that energy, into a processes. You can do the same thing in a much smaller scale in the buildings when you take the, the air from a boiler or even the hot spaces. So think always hot to cold, right? So let's say there are places in your building that generates the heat, um, such as data processors, right? In New York City, we have a lot of uh, large buildings, a lot of data centers, 
picture of Google building and other type of IT companies, they need to cool down the processes. So equipment that can transfer that hot air, like a heat exchanger, and provide it back into the somewhere else in the building where you need energy, let's say pre domestic hot water for showers and and um, sinks, that would be a way of going from one place where the heat is generated to another place where heat is needed. And those are very basic off-the-shelf equipment. It just requires certain strategy and thinking. They are obviously very much of a more advanced technologies. And typically, if you're not getting enough opportunities within the buildings, you start looking at um, efficiencies and the processes and technologies there are taking renewable sources such as air, water, or ground. And for those, we have air source heat pump, water source heat pump, and ground source heat pump. There's also another technology that is start coming, which is called wastewater heat pump. But essentially, all these technologies are taking a free BTU from somewhere there is very abundant, such as air, water, ground, or waste, and transferring it into typically water, and then the water can further transfer it into the air or transfer another form of water for a process. So tell me a little bit, the project that you're working on now has to do with wastewater, right? Can you can you tell us what the process is that happens there and um, how we're looking at it and what we're looking at it for? Yeah, so, so one of the concepts we're looking and technologies are for removing um, heat from um, sewers or waste stream that comes from the building. And the idea is exactly as I described before, if the building, typical building wastewater entering sewer system is somewhere between maybe 60, 70 degrees, and that is the energy that could be still reused back in your building. So the technology that we are looking at are transferring that heat indirectly into your domestic hot water and preheating extra 10 degrees or 20 degrees that you would have done otherwise with the fossil fuels or with electricity that we that we have to be very smart on how we use. So essentially it's the energy efficiency measure of taking something that you would completely dump into the drain and recycling back into the building. And that's really a smart way of how we can use energy. Waste heat is is not only in a form of water, but I described before in the form of air. But wherever you have differential between hot and cold places, and you can put equipment that can transfer that heat and you can place it in another part of the building. So, for instance, if you have a room in your home that's facing south and the sun comes in and beats on it every day, that room is can get up to get pretty warm. Whereas in the basement, it might be cold or in another room on the other side of the house, it might be cold. So the technology is is trying to um, level out the temperature in the home by using that excess heat in one room to heat another room? Pretty much. For the air processes, yes. And for the wastewater, you do exactly the same thing, but you're transferring it through the water media instead of instead of air. And and that's the concept behind the ground source heat pump as well. But in this case, the ground source heat pump tap into the earth heat that is relatively constant at a certain depth and transferring that heat from the soil into the water. And that water comes up from the underground and carry on into the building processes and continue transferring. The problem with with all that, when I mentioned at the beginning in efficiency, is that you you will never get 100% of the same energy um, back converted to another form of energy. So let's say you're going from the ground source to water source, you will face the losses in the conversion and you will face the losses in distribution, but majority of the losses in the application. So even if we are very good when, when the conversion and distribution Typical user wastes 10% of energy on average by not using it to the to the level that they meant to. And that 10% is exactly what waste heat recovery system going after. 
because in, in general, in aggregate, this could represent a lot of energy savings, a lot of customers' cost savings, and essentially greenhouse gas emission savings. So this must be pretty exciting for somebody who is really interested in reducing uh, greenhouse gas emissions in buildings, especially the amount buildings that we have here in New York City. Um, so where is this technology now? Then uh, that's something that you're looking into, correct? Well, yes, we're looking at the vast amount of technology, not only wastewater, we're looking at applications in, like I said, ground source and air source. We're also looking at different strategy, how to couple uh, demand with the supply and what are the ideal customers. And I came to a realization that the ideal customer is the customer who has a lot of losses and high heat application. So it could be industrial customer and it could be someone like um, commercial laundry mass. They have a high water uh, temperature effluent or a data center. They generate a lot of heat and have a need for removing it. But it could be also typical large commercial or residential building um, they simply, for example, steam customer, they have a condensate, which has on average more energy than the sewer system. And they typically don't have awareness and education that they could still use that amount of heat with um, certain technology to bring it back into their building rather than evaporating it outside into the atmosphere. So this technology would really um, help the customer get more sort of bang for their buck uh, by the, their energy use and reduce their emissions too. So it's, it's a win-win. When do you think technology like this will become available? Where are we in the process? Yeah, so R&D is screening through um, a lot of new techs that are coming in the market. And when I say a lot, I mean they really, they're really increasing exponentially uh, with very exciting and simple solutions, how to recapture the heat. For example, there is a company who takes the heat that is generated on the need of the solar panel as a byproduct for electric, um, electric generation from solar energy and run a little tiny copper tubing that can carry on into your heat transfer of the domestic hot water and preheat the water, which is essentially free heat that you wouldn't even think of capturing otherwise because you're already happy that you're generating a solar energy. So this is one of the example how being smarter and more efficient, not only that example will actually not only generate more efficiently electric energy, but it will also give you extra heat to introduce into your process. Uh, so where are we with, with offering for our customers? Some of the technologies such as waste heat recovery are already commercially available. Some of them are at the brink of being commercially available. I work in R&D tightly and closely with energy efficiency folks. And as soon as we have a fully vetted application, we are forwarding it to our um, clean heat programs for application and incentive offering for our customers. So some of them are already available and many of them are coming, um, coming into a fruition. So if I'm interested in this, if I have a building that I want to see capture the waste heat to, to make it benefit me and reduce my energy bills and, and increase my efficiency, um, where should I go? Where where do I look up for the Con Edison website? What's the program I should look for? So for Con Ed website, I think the best thing is type energy efficiency and on their needs there will be a navigation for clean heat program. There are contacts, it depends on what building sector you belong to. And I think the site is quite intuitive for you to be contacted by either energy efficiency or we encourage customers to submit application. Depends on the which program and which building sector they belong to for a specific measure. When it comes to measures that are not commercially available or we're working and we're looking for demonstration side, that will fall within R&D and I will be happy to take those type of requests. Excellent. So, and I think what, what's important is people who are willing to work with us on, find, on looking at this technology for the demonstration projects, there's a lot of benefits in doing that, right? So yes. 
Yes, we actively, especially technology, they are ready to go, but we want to test it in the small scale. We we are providing a little bit larger incentives because R&D will be adding to the co-funding just to test the first sites, first of a kind demonstrations. And that's where we collaborate closely with energy efficiency and also actively looking for customers who are who would like to pioneer certain of technology that are first of a kind new and help us to prove the concept and provide measurement and verifications. So for those demonstration side, I will be very happy to work with specific customers directly, do the feasibility studies and assessments, and then um, make them really showcase the technology that could benefit everybody else. That's great. And they'll be on the cutting edge of this kind of work too. Um, Thanks so much for joining us today. Is there anything that I should have asked you that I didn't, Sylvia? Um, No, I think we cover it. it. This is really sort of a big dilemma, I would say almost trilemma, because you, you're trying to balance cost, savings, greenhouse gas reduction, and overall environment benefits. And really, there is no one silver bullet that here is the only technology. You have a waste stream everywhere. You have to have someone who is um, aware of where are they generated and where it can be reused. And you have to have someone who is aware of what technology could be out there. If you look at the small building scheme, you see refrigerants almost everywhere. Like in the back of your refrigerator, as you see heat generated from a car, it's the the art of coupling where it is wasted with where it is needed, what makes this perfect. And um, when you look at outside the building, you have lots of heat generated from, for example, from New York City subways. If we can apply something that transferred from wall from one side of the subway to another and take that heat into preheating water in the building, that could have been very transformative as well. So I think we have to look at from a micro perspective, small processes like a data processor as buildings and then outside the building and think of more of a where else we can make a big impact. So I'm happy to continue screening through creative technology, smart technology that can do exactly that and help to really create outreach and education to our customers, what they can do on their own and what they can do with our incentives to uh, lower their waste heat and lower their energy cost. Well, I think a lot of New Yorkers would really support you trying to get the subway temperature down and <laughs> use it for <laughs> something else because it is summer and it's hot in the subway. So that's, thank you so much, for sure. Sylvia. Thanks for being our guest today. We really appreciate it. And I look forward to our next conversation uh, with what you're working on. It's cutting edge. And if no, if anything else, people take away the fact and, and start identifying places where heat's generated in their own homes or in their buildings that they could think maybe that heat could help reduce my energy cost somewhere else. So appreciate your time today, Sylvia. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. If you have a technology, an idea, a comment, or a question, send us an email to podcast at coned.com. We'd love to hear from you. Remember to follow us on all our social platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Our handle is at Con Edison. Make sure to use our hashtag, hashtag current thought.